Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns and welcome to another episode of Career Advice, Ideas, Options, and Hacking. Hey, uh, this one is critical uh, as you develop in your career. Hopefully, you'll get to this point if, you, if you're not already. It's the point where recruiters call you. Now, recruiters also known as headhunters. Uh, th this is the most misunderstood role in your career. I've seen very few people be successful with this, and the ones who get it do really well. Now, what most people do is they don't call these people back, or they ignore them, or they brush them off, or they uh, just, uh, you know, think they're pests. And, you know, when you're happy at your job and everything's going well, it feels that way. I get that. It does. And, but these, these people are also salespeople. And they're critical salespeople. Now, I want everybody to watch Jerry Maguire if you haven't watched it. If you have watched it, watch it again. You got to think of these recruiters as your Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire was his responsibility as a sports agent. What do they do? They're the intermediary. And everybody hates middlemen. But in certain cases, middlemen add a lot of value, even though you don't see it. You think, oh, I can just talk to the owner or I can talk to the hiring manager and we can resolve it. In some cases, you can. But in a lot of cases, having somebody in the middle to uh, mediate, to negotiate, to be more honest, because let's face it, nobody loves giving bad news. You know, nobody likes telling you you're not getting the job. Nobody likes telling you you're not uh, experienced enough or your education isn't good enough or, or this or that. So th this is why recruiters are critical. And I, I didn't make this mistake. This is one of the smart things. <laughs> there were three smart things I did in my life. This is one of them. I, because in my career as a sales rep, it's a very transient profession, meaning that uh, you, you typically go – you know, especially if you're money motivated. Uh, the math, this is how it goes. First year, you might make your number and do okay. Second year, you typically do really well. The third year, they, they up your quota so high and cut your territory so that it makes it really hard to make your number. And if, or if you have a good manager, they'll protect you. But then after the third year, the fourth year, you know, the CFO goes, hey, he's making too much money. We could hire three people for the price we're paying that person. And all of a sudden, the math doesn't work for you anymore. It, it, it's the most bizarre thing that goes on. It, it, I don't think it'll ever change. Uh, you really need to have either somebody up at the top of the company getting it, saying, I want my salespeople driving around in Lamborghinis, right? Unless you have that attitude, they just think they're overpaid, um, you know, email and phone call monkeys. And that's just the way, that's the culture. Uh, you know, for the number of years I've been in it, it hasn't, I haven't seen it change. Once in a while, you'll find the right person. So I have to, had to always keep my eyes out for the next thing. And after three years, you know, you'd get your new comp plan, your new territory, and, you know, all the things that you built are now divided up among brand new people. And uh, the comp plan uh, doesn't look like you're going to crush it, but you still have to work just as hard uh, for about, you know, uh, half the money. <laughs> or three quarters of the money. So you, you start looking around or the companies got sold or there's always reasons, right? And, and today, especially there's very few companies that you're going to start at in your twenties and retire at in your sixties. So there's going to be career changes. There's going to be job changes. And guess what? Job boards are the dumbest thing ever. I'm sorry. I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, uh they're, they're the minimum wage tr mouse trap of this, and I see people getting rich off of them. Why? Because the companies that hire off of job boards are too cheap to use recruiters, and the and the jobs don't pay enough for them to use recruiters. Okay, so you may be at that point in your career where it's the only choice you have. But, you know, I, I can certainly show you smarter ways of getting into a company because 
I've been a hiring manager at, at big companies and small companies. Nobody pays attention to those applications that come in through the website or really through those job boards. Um, I think uh, HR just pays for them so that they can cover their butt and throw a bunch of resumes around. Uh, it, the good companies, the, the companies where you're going to make uh, you know, a livable wage and get out of that minimum wage brain dead trap that uh, so many of us get stuck in or just mentally believe that that's all there is out there for us, the job boards are not the way to go. You, you need a, a, a skill, a marketable skill that companies pay for and and staying away from the b2c business consumer because that that's going to go to the internet or jeff bezos at amazon is going to eat it all up one way or another or you know ai is going to eat it up one way or another but business to business is exploding i mean it is exploding why because now that everything's in the cloud you know that thing they talk about uh it's so inexpensive to start companies that everybody needs all these people, people to run the company, salespeople, marketing people, engineers, accountants, uh, you know, social media people. They need all of this. Now, recruiters are the people that proactively seek you out. And if, they, if you're lucky enough that they call, take that call. Get to know them. I, I, I admit, you know, probably 60% of them aren't that good because it's a commission-only sales job. And it attracts, um, you know, commission-only salespeople. And some of those are fantastic. I've met some of the, the best salespeople of my life are recruiters. And, um, and there's a lot that aren't that good, okay? It's just like everything else, right? But they, what they have is they have intel. They have insight into the market, into how your resume, how your LinkedIn, how your Twitter, how your social presence, how your personal brand is going to be perceived within the marketplace. They can give you an idea of how much you can get, how much other people are getting paid. They know who's hiring, who's firing way before anybody else does. They, they are the underground of your industry. To ignore them is foolish. And it's too easy to ignore them. I'd always take their calls. I would always return their calls, most of them. You know, I, I, if I qualified them as, you know, incompetent, which there were quite a few, I had ignored them. But there was, you know, a handful that were great. I would take their calls. And I knew that the, the style. There's the, you know, throw them all against the wall style. I stayed away from them. You know, because I know that all they want to do is fill up the manager's meet day with you know, 10 candidates and I'm one of the 10 and they're not going to champion me and I'm going to waste my time getting there, you know, dressing up, preparing for an interview. And it's, they don't know much about the job, the territory, the comp plan, and it would be a waste of time. But I would talk to them. I would find out information about them. Tell me about who's, who's making money. I'd always ask that. I go, who's making the most? What's hot right now? You know, what, what should I be looking out for? And what you'd look for is a mafia, trying to get into a mafia. A mafia is a group of people that uh, get along well, work well together, and go from great company to great company. And they're part of your network. And if you can get that, that is fantastic. And I, I've had that. Uh, what most people do is just the opposite. They become manager haters. Uh, which is self-destructive, and no matter how good you are, and being the lone wolf out there, no matter how good you are, and I played that for a while. Uh, yes, I could. You can always get a job, but you, you're kind of on your own, and you have to do a lot more work, and you don't have the back backing of all the other infrastructure people that you need. Uh, the next thing is they can coach you. They can give you feedback on your interview. Like I got this coaching that, oh, you don't sound that excited on the phone. And I was like, wow. That, the, what I found was that people wanted someone salesy when they talk to a salesperson. No matter, even if a salesy person didn't work in all of my jobs, 
all of my jobs, it was much more consultative. I was selling to executives and engineers and uh, software architects. They didn't want a salesy person. They wanted somebody coming in who knew what they were talking about. And I knew what I was talking about. And I could learn the technology and I could learn how it was different than competitors. I could under show them why they had to do it now. Now, I had to amp up my game. So I started going to Starbucks before I go to the interview. So I'd be all jumpy and people liked that. <laughs> Except for one time they thought I was quirky. But I had like this mocha frappuccino thing. So I got the sugar and the caffeine all at once and I was wigging out a little bit. But but anyways, you get you get feedback about your interviewing skills, and that helped me because ever since then I I knew that, and I knew that when I did a phone interview, I'd have to be really excited and and f at least feign that excitement because that's what they wanted to hear, even though it, it wasn't what they want really wanted. They needed to hear it. So what you want to do is always be you know a notch more excited than they are a notch better dressed than they are, a notch earlier than they are, all of those things. And, and the next thing is it, they become even uh, an informal reference for you. They will cover your butt if they, if they think that you're going to be the person that gets in. They're going to champion you. They're going to sell you. And that's what you want. And what you can do for them is you can tell them, uh, other people that you know in your network that would be a better fit for that job. And if you help them, if you take their calls, because let's face it, they get return calls probably like most salespeople, you know, one out of 30 to 100 a day, right? And, you know, the emails, the same thing if you're a salesperson, terrible response rates. If you're the person that talks to them like a human being, you share information about the technology or the, the industry that you're in, what's working, what's not working, who's hiring, who's firing, uh, who's hot, who's not, you get to build part of your network. And they're the most wired people in your network. They're the connectors, if you looked at uh, Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point, the connectors are the ones that are at the center of the hub and they're connected to the ecosystem that you live in. So if they fit, build rapport with them, make them part of your network. Um, you know, it, it really is critical because, you know, fill, job boards, waste of time, filling out applications, waste of time. It's your network and recruiters that are going to get you the great jobs, and your personal reputation and your personal brand that's going to move you up in your career. Today, that's how it works. It's like, you know, when an opening comes up, it's like, uh, who's the best person in this area? Who's the best person at doing this? That's the question they're asking their network. And that's who you need to be. And you need to be that visible person within your network. So don't discount recruiters. I hope that's been helpful. And I hope you get to a point where you get recruiters calling you. That's a great time. And it's also a good signal about how good the economy is. Because, you know, when there's all these job openings, uh, you can really get a better job than you're qualified for by having a recruiter come in. Because what they're doing, they're putting your resume at the top of the list. Because managers don't read resumes. They're too busy. They got their job. What they want is like, oh, they want a bunch of candidates to come in. They want somebody to tell them who's the right person. And that's a recruiter. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're checking out b2brevenue.com uh, and connect up with me on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, you got to get there. That's the place to be. You have to build a career in the business-to-business -business world. That's where the money is. That's where the fun is. That's where entrepreneurship is. Thanks for listening.